Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Nev Reviews. If it's your first time joining us here, please make sure you hit that old subscribe button and toggle on that little alarm bell. That way you'll be notified when our next video drops. Not to worry though, you've got to get through this episode first. Today we're going to be taking a look at this manual boost controller from Neon Technologies. Radio. So let's open her up and have a look. All right, let's open it up, see what's in the box. All right, so we've got our unit. We've got uh, some mounting hardware and some constant tension clamps. Got a fully sick decal and some instructions. Cool. All in English. Quite in depth. So that's cool. Very good. All right, let's um, check it out. A nice heavy feeling unit. Seems to pretty closely resemble the Turbo Smart units. It is a directional valve as it's a gated valve. And what that means is it's got a ball and a seat so that it doesn't actually flow air through it until the predetermined pressure. Theoretically bringing boost on quicker. The knob on top, which has a notch and ball type catch to stop it from rattling loose. Seems to work quite smoothly. Cool. How about we pull it apart and see what's inside? Okay, well the barbs aren't even tight, so there's a issue to start with. Right, there's a ball and our spring. Inlet barb. There's our outlet barb. Nothing. Uh, nothing under there. You will see that the inlet barb has a restrictor built into it. See that there? Comparatively small to the outlet barb. Okay. Here's the body of the unit. Let's undo the grub screw off the adjustment mechanism. Behind that we're also going to have a spring and a ball. And then we might wind it all the way out. adjuster has an o-ring on top to seal it down in the adjustment port and you can see the light shining through the ports there
can see a bit of machining swarf down in these airports here. Let's try and pick it out and have a look at it. see it there. Swore from when the ports were drilled and tapped. Nothing too major but it does kind of indicate a you know unit that was put together quite quickly. All right so there's the body of the unit. Now what can we tell about it by having it pulled down. Well, what I can tell you is that even though it is a gated valve, the adjuster doesn't adjust spring tension, which means it's only gated up until a certain point, preset by this spring. So the boost adjustment is purely just done by air bypass coming up through here, past this tapered valve and out these holes. So this is really a bleed tee, bleeding off a little bit of pressure before the remaining pressure goes to the wastegate. Anyway, let's um, put it back together and we're going to fit it to an MY99WRX and see how it goes. Alright, so it's all back together. Let's um, put it in the car. Alright, so let's take a bit of a look at it now that it's all fitted up and sitting in there all tidy. There's the unit. And there's our new silicon lines just going directly to the turbo and the wastegate. Not bad, eh? Cool. So I'm going to do a second gear wide open throttle run like before and see if we have any difference in boost response. Certainly do. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around this long watching this review. Now uh, let's have a little chat about this Neon Technologies boost controller. Now it's not actually a proper gated valve. The reason it's not is because the gated portion or that spring control ball valve is not how you control the boost level. Um, proper gated valves use a spring adjustment to alter that pressure against the ball which means that all air passing through the gated valve is pressure control. Uh, this one isn't. This one, uh, as we found by fitting it to the Rexy, and um, hopefully you watched that video over at Nev's Garage when we fitted the valve, uh, you'll see that the, the valve is preset at 14 PSI. And that's the gated portion. That spring ball's pressure. That's its specs. So um, up to then it's gated. If you adjust it out, the remainder of your boost level is just bleeding off the difference. 
This presents another problem, however, that if you require less than 14 psi of boost, you have to physically modify the valve. So you need to alter the length of that spring. So for example, it wouldn't work uh, in its delivered state on my Subaru Vortex, which runs 8 psi boost. So you have to keep that in mind when ordering the valve, that it is designed for a pretty specific set of circumstances. And if your requirements fall outside those parameters, then you are going to have to modify the valve. Now it's a small valve, it's easy to mount. It does come with a universal bracket of sorts, so you can screw it to part of the body or another bracket in the engine bay. Uh, it's also quite a small valve with hidden screws on the back. It is quite easy to fab up a mounting bracket of some kind out of some old aluminum you've got at home or something. So that's good. It also looks pretty attractive. Uh, it's shaped like a nice sexy lady in the middle. Uh, it does have straight in, straight out fittings. It's quite easy to hook up and adapt to numerous cars. You know, it looks attractive. It has a nice little shiny knob on top that you get to adjust the boost with. So, you know, yeah, it looks pretty good. It doesn't have any landings machined in the body for the seals on the fitting, okay? The fittings just use a flat rubber washer, pretty much like a roofing tech screw to seal the fitting to the body. And they don't have any machined landing or seat or anything like that, a groove for an O-ring, so that if those rubber washers ever shrink, crack, or break, those fittings are going to end up leaking air against the body. And that's going to also alter your boost level that you've adjusted. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. It could be, you know, designed a little bit better. The price of the unit is very affordable compared to other units that look exactly the same or very similar to it. So if you're after a way to adjust boost on a budget, this could be the valve for you. Well, I guess we're at the pointy end now. Let's uh, check out the official Nev Reviews ratings for quality. It's not great, but it's not terrible. There is some manufacturing flashing left inside the unit where they've drilled down the adjustment hole to make the thread and the port for the adjustment knob. Some flashing in the bottom there. Not really that critical to operation and probably unless you went looking for it, you wouldn't notice it but it is there. Um, it doesn't need to be there. It just shows a little bit of lack of pride when it's put together. And I tend to think that um, it does indicate when something's made to a budget. Other than that, the valve is pretty good. There's not many moving parts in it and uh, the moving parts that are in it function okay. Just keep in mind those seals against the body for the fittings. So for quality, I give it a three out of five. For functionality, it does work. As long as your requirements fall in the side of the parameters that it's designed for, it will work. And it's sort of, kind of, almost a nearly gated valve. I've had it fitted to the Rexy for a couple of weeks now, and it does hold flawless, constant boost. But like I said, we just lucked out that I wanted 15 PSI boost, the unit's set to 14, so it's just an ideal, perfect boost range valve for that application. So for functionality, I give it a three and a half out of five. For appearance, it looks pretty good. It's pretty attractive. It's made out of aluminium. It's black body, got a shiny silver top. If someone looks under your hood, they're gonna be impressed by the go fast bits. It's gonna save you buying gold chains with dollar signs on there, because it's gonna give you some respect, right? So for appearance, I give it a four out of five. Overall, it's, you know, it's an okay valve. It does work as long as your requirements fall inside those very specific parameters, okay? You really want to have a think about what sort of boost you're desiring before you order this valve. If it turns out to be around the 14 PSI, great. Go for it. If not, keep in mind that you're going to have to modify the valve. So overall, I give it a 3 out of 5. So I guess that's it guys, that pretty much wraps us up. Thank you for watching this NEV review. Uh, thank you for sharing and liking, and also thank you for subscribing. Until next time, be safe. We'll see you then on NEV Reviews.